Welcome everyone to the Success Elevated Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Hayden Lee, and I am joined this week by my co-host. It's been a little while since we've had him on, Mr. Derek Priest, founding it's partner always, here at Spot On Solutions. Welcome I back on, Derek. I always love that. I like, I always look, I listen for that. I've, I've been elevated to the co-host <laughs> solution. I love, I love it. Like, stop it, stop it, stop it. No, seriously, this is, you've done such an awesome job with this podcast, and I'm just like, Oh, I'm the yeah, co-host. you're a I'm co-host, co-host now. There. Oh, you feel like, you feel a little lighter. You feel like you're floating a little bit. Yeah. Yep. So thank you. Yeah, it's great no problem. To be here, Hayden. I do love to be on these shows with you. I really, really do. Um, well, I wish I, could, I wish I could be on all of them with you, but I know it, it's 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 like my favorite part of what I get to do every week, and it's get yeah. I get to sit down with cool people and and talk about cool stories and cool products and how we can better help our audience. And I, it's just it's awesome. So yeah. we've got this week is no different. In fact, I would say this is probably one of the most helpful podcasts that just about any of our listeners are going to listen to um, over the last few episodes. Derek, if you don't mind, maybe kind of kick off and introduce who our guest is this week and what we're going to be talking about a little bit. Okay, awesome. I would love to. I am, and I am like you. I am super excited about our guest today too because number one, not only is Eric like a super awesome guy, like one of the coolest guys I know, um, but he is one of the smartest guys I know also, and really has got a a vision of how to help people. Um, in a lot of different ways. So he, I'm, we're, we're good buddies. We're good friends. I, I consider him a brother. So I would like to introduce our guest, Eric Clark from Excellent. currently the great state of Ohio. He's, he's been around the world, but he is, he lives in Ohio. He's done some great things. I'll let him kind of tell us about his background, but Eric, Thanks for joining us. I'm super glad you're here. Can't wait to ha- to hear all of the wisdom and the knowledge that you're going <laughs> to drop on us today. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Derek. Honestly, it's a pleasure to be here. We've seen these podcasts. We've watched them ourselves. We've shared them on Facebook. Um, I had heard about Hayden from you, actually. And uh, it's cool to be here on this with you. Actually, I'm super honored to be here with you. Uh, I've I've seen and heard the wisdom on these shows. And so it's it's uh, a little daunting to be sitting here, but I feel like we do have some value to share. Um, I, I want to back up real quick because you were, you know, mentioning your title. I heard Hayden say all the cool people he gets to meet with on this. So I'm, I'm titling myself today as one of those cool people. So one of those you, cool people. A hundred percent. But no, tr- <laughs> truly, um, honestly, it is exciting. Yeah. I, and I do feel like there's some cool value that we could share. So thank you for having me on. And I am in Ohio. Correct, Derek. <laughs> Love it. Awesome. Well, we, we won't hold that against you that you live in Ohio. It's no big deal. We won't hold yeah. but we'll, we'll still, we still think you're pretty still cool. Be all right with it. Okay. <laughs> all right, no, cool. we love it. We love it. Eric, if like, let's kind of kick things off. I know a lot of our audience is probably already familiar with who you are, but if you wouldn't mind kind of give us a little bit of background into who you are, how you maybe got involved in kind of the restoration world. Yeah. Um, and I think from there, obviously we're going to have a pretty natural conversation into what's led you to be where you are today with inventory shield. But if you, yeah, if you don't mind, kind of give us a little bit of background into who you are and, and, and how you got involved in this great industry that we're all a part of. Excellent. So cool. Yeah. Um, late nineties, we'll, we'll go back to the late nineties, just returned home. I was living in the Dominican Republic for two years and uh, fell and I just needed a job to put me through college. So got into carpet cleaning, um, kind of started to realize how the industry could be in carpet cleaning thought i need to start my own business and just work my own schedule one thing led to another got into carpet cleaning natural fit go into restoration um and so this is all in arizona actually I'm, I'm living in mesa arizona at the time working kind of the phoenix metro area and and so restoration was just starting it feels like back in those days late 90s early 2000s chuck dewall was coming on the scene in the restoration world and there was this buzz about all this new technology coming into the restoration world um but mostly i just really started a carpet cleaning business to put myself through college unfortunately my family started about the same time well fortunately my family started but i didn't finish college <laughs> mm. um I, I started a family and next thing you know i thought i need to work more and bring home more money and um, one thing led to another. So then my next goal was to graduate from college before my children knew I didn't. 
that was my next goal. And it made me feel better that I could move on a little bit in life. Um, but I kind of feel like in a way, you know, roundabout way, I was able to learn some of the, the some of the lessons of business. And I, you know, I feel like I, my personal motto is anybody who's honest with God, honest with their fellow man and is willing to work can build a business and be very successful. And that kind of was what I held on to. I just, you know, stayed humble, stayed prayerful and worked hard. And uh, I think I learned the lessons that I could have learned in college would have been a little bit easier, but, but here I am today. And I'm grateful for the, for that background. Um, so just, yeah, just a small little mom and pa carpet cleaning business is where it began late nineties. And that kind of is what started me on the equipment struggle. Believe it or not, we were really struggling in business in that time. And um, I had a whole trailer full of equipment sitting in front of my house. And I don't know how much to this day was in it. I just know it was full, whatever that meant. Um, <laughs> And I got stolen and my insurance was like, oh, okay. So what'd you have in there? I'm like, I don't know. I really don't even know. Well, what was the VIN number of the trailer? I'm like, I have no idea. I hadn't had it logoed yet. I didn't have the money for that, but it was full of equipment and it's just a big chaos. And I'm like, oh my heaven. So interesting. That was kind of my run in number one, but yeah, your original question. That's how I got into the, the world of restoration was through the carpet cleaning industry. I think many did at the same time. Um, so yeah, it was good. Been good for the family though. No, that's, that's a great background story. Um, it's interesting before we kind of dive into the the equipment piece. Um, I I always like to ask some of our business owners that come onto the podcast and talk a little bit about, yeah, kind of those initial, uh, the initial motivations, I guess, behind starting a business. Um, did, was it something like being an entrepreneur or having kind of that spirit? Was that something that you always had? Or was it something that you, was it just kind of a necessity of the moment? You're like, oh my gosh, I, I've i started a family. I've got to start making more money. Like what was, what was kind of the motivating factor to be like, okay, let's, let's start a business. Was it something you always yeah. wanted to do or what, what was kind of the reason no. for it? Oddly enough, my dream was to be a farmer. So I should have moved to Derek's part of the world, not Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see farm cotton or something. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, so I get home, I, I've started to realize when I say how the carpet cleaning world was, I care about people. And I think many of us business owners generally care about people, really. Um, and we enjoy serving and we get fulfillment of, out of seeing them be served. And uh, and so I thought, all right, I'll put myself through school. I, I took a loan from my mom, eight, uh, $900. What I did, I didn't have any money. So what I did is I went down, I got a Best Buy credit card. And I bought her a big screen TV that she had always wanted, brought it home and said, now, can you give me the money for the TV? So it gave me six months to pay it off. So I had a $900 loan on my credit. And uh, that's how I started. Um, started doing some advertisements, door hangers. But I think the real reason I started is I felt like people were being underserved and overcharged. Mm -hmm. And I don't have a problem charging to make a living, but I just felt like there wasn't enough value to go with it. And it bothered me. And I'm not perfect. And I've, you know, I've done things in, in life where I, you know, needed to, to change my ways. But I think overall, that was my kind of my feeling like I can serve these people as good or better, give them a reasonable price, make a good living and uh, and put myself through school. And that was kind of the premise. I needed a, a schedule that work. And so I thought, you know, let's do this. Um, met some great, I call them friendly competitors um, because there's other people in the industry. In fact, they're still in the industry. In fact, there's some names that we could name drop today that that started with me back in the day that we were all friendly competitors. And, and I liked the camaraderie of the other companies, but mostly I love the service part. And I feel like that kind of still fills me today. I still try to, I'm not perfect again, but I do try to fill my life a little bit with service because it's filling. And uh, that's where it all began for me. It was just, I loved it. And, and it kind of was uh, it's instant gratification. No, that's, <laughs> so, yeah. that, that's, gr- that's great. I love asking that question because I get so many varying answers and it's, it's awesome to hear people's motivation for starting a business. Yeah. Some people yeah. it's out of necessity. They're like, Oh, I never was going to own a business in my entire life. It was a complete necessity. Right. Um, some yeah. people, it was just always in their blood from, you know, a young kid, they were trying to start businesses and be an entrepreneur. And so it was just kind of who they were. And I love the story of uh, you felt that it's such a great phrase. You felt like people were underserved and overcharged, right? Like you just feel yeah. like there was, there was a, a niche you could fill um, yeah. and you could, and you could help people with it, which I love. I, I think that's, that's really, really cool. And it, it speaks to who you are, Eric, which is cool. Um, and, and, and I think there was some necessity, but oddly enough at that time, 
I remember a friend interviewed me. He was doing a master's program. He's like, hey, I want to interview like a small business. And and uh, they kind of came up, their their take was, you know, you, you will thrive as you as you build businesses because there is some enjoyment to like seeing something be built, um, but definitely necessity. I was broke and I had children <laughs> to feed. And uh, <laughs> and the way I was going to be successful was serve more and, and charge reasonable. And, you know, raising your rates is always helpful to every business. Just add more value when you do it. And that's what we did. And we, we, we did have a really great business. In fact, one of my friendly competitors of those days Ended up buying my company out and allowed me to move out to Ohio, where I bought a service master franchise, oddly enough. Sold that in 2009. And that was a nice, that was, that was a great experience as well. But that kind of further rounded my desire to do what we do today with these apps. But anyways, I know you had a question earlier and I cut you off and act like this is my podcast. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Uh, what I was going to do, I think kind of the next piece to this is, is you've, you kind of teed up the conversation with the story of the trailer, right? And how... Yeah frustrating and just catastrophic that's got to be to a small business to lose an entire trailer full of equipment. And I wanted to have kind of Derek, maybe you've teed up this conversation, have Derek kind of really kick it off. One of the challenges, Derek, that we've talked about a lot, or maybe not a challenge, but one thing that you've talked about um, to give us, you know, our team here at Spot On Solutions insight into what it's like to be a restoration business owner so that we can better market for them mm-hmm. is that a lot of restoration business owners and cleaning companies as well, cleaning and restoration business owners, they're the one way that they make a considerable amount of money is by renting out their equipment, right? Like, like tracking and renting out their equipment is a crucial piece to the business because as you described, it's like having, if you have, 50 air movers sitting in a shop that you own. It's like having 50 little employees up on a shelf and you've got to know where they're at, what job they're doing, what's going on. And it's a huge piece to this business that, um, you know, Derek, you were, before we started recording, you were highlighting how you were tracking those employees for lack of a better term with pen and paper. Right. And that's a lot of business owners do it. So maybe kind of kick off, you know, take, take Eric's initial conversation about this, Tr- struggle with tracking equipment and, and maybe talk a little bit about how you had similar struggles when you were owned your restoration company. Well, yeah, I, I agree. And I think that's, it is a struggle for every, for many, most restoration companies, because you're right. It is, this is a very equipment heavy industry. Um, and, and it's, it's not heavy, meaning like the equipment is so heavy, you can't move it. It's like, there's like hundreds, there's thousands of moving parts. And, you know, all of which are crucial to be able to do a job. Um, but they're also very difficult to keep track of, you know, like yeah. Eric, you, <laughs> you put all that equipment in a trailer and God. what is it? Where is God. it? How much of it do I have? And how much of it is going on a job where like that is like tracking that equipment and keeping track of it is, is a struggle. And I know for me, and I got to say for a lot of, probably a lot of business owners um, in, in this industry and others for that matter, like I was losing so much money every year. It was cost. My business was costing me, so much money just in lost equipment like equipment that went out that i paid for but never came back right yeah and so you and and no one knows where it's at or eric tell me about this like tell me if this ever happened to you you get done with a job and six months later yeah. homeowner calls you and says hey I got some of these big blue, like fan things in my garage. Do you want them back? (laughs) Or worse yet, this and this happened to me. (laughs) I went to a yard sale one time. I went to a yard sale. Oh no! And it just so happens that I found a couple of pieces of equipment. (laughs) <laughs> of my equipment that you own. They were selling <laughs> in a yard sale. Oh and my I gosh. Was like, oh, it, there it, it is. Terrible. Like, so yeah. I, that's why, like, when Eric started talking to me about inventory shield, I was like, 
<laughs> it was like the windows of heaven opened up and shined down on me and said, this is an answer to your this problem. This is amazing. So it is. And, uh, you know, and I'm going to, we'll, we'll let Eric talk about, you know, you can, I'm sure you've got horror stories as well. Oh, right? heavens. It, it's funny you say that. One of those is very so much a real problem we had. Um, and and, I, and and early in business, I realized, realized I kind of had two struggles. The first struggle was, where's my equipment? Where's my tools? They were over there that gave them to you last. I don't know where it's at. It was at that house. We picked all the equipment up. We don't know where it's at. Um, the other thing is I had a struggle with managing people that were sending us referrals. And actually, oddly enough, all these years later, I really felt like, you know, I prayed for a lot of help in this business. I felt like I was inspired to build that second app, which is called Referral Reactor. That's a total conversation for another day, but it helps us manage referrals. So those were the two struggles I was having is how do I keep track of my equipment? Now, the equipment part was real dollars lost frequently. Um, so let me tell, okay, so honestly, true, I'll tell you a, a few stories. So the first one, my first encounter with an equipment problem was my trailer. And in life, I still believe this to this day. I preach this to my children. Sometimes the struggle is the blessing, truly. I really feel like there's times where something that's a struggle, like getting your trailer is stolen, is kind of shaping you and rounding you to do something in life, like building a build an app that does serve people's needs. So they don't, if they get their trailer stolen, they know exactly what's in there. They have all the serial numbers. They have all the pictures of it. They don't have the same problem I had. Um, and so I feel like my struggle could be a blessing, not only to my future life, but to others. And and we feel like we provide an, an app that there's, there's really cool technologies out there, by the way. There's some great technologies. We've got full GPS, you've got RFID. And you've got us, kind of the QR code. We feel like we provide a lot of value by giving people these cool tracking labels. But let me tell you my story. So another story that actually happened is I currently own a restoration company. Um, and that's kind of how we finance the building of all these apps. But what, what happened is we went to a job site. This is uh, years ago. And actually, this was kind of like number two that said, you need to do something to get this under control. Go to, go to a home, dry out a, a basement. Older people, they never really went to their basement anyways. So we took care of it. They paid us in full. Two years later, she calls us and she's like, hey, we would love to have you come dry our basement again. That's the exact same thing happened. And we thought, oh my heavens, we're so sorry to hear. And then she said, but you don't need to bring your equipment this time because it's all still here. And it's all still running. No. <laughs> it was running for two years. Every, our, everything was still running. And I didn't have any clue it was gone. And it was like, I don't know the DU and six rate air mover. I mean, it's a basement, but it wasn't a lot of equipment, but still, you know, we're talking three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. I think there was an AFD down there. The filters were plugged, but you know, Hey, it's still running two years and they were great, great customers. So I couldn't believe it. So sure enough, we sent our team out there and I'm waiting for their real time pictures to come through. I'm like, no joke. There really is all of our equipment. So I realized then, because at that point, okay, let me back up. Actually years ago, we probably all went to Kurt Bolden school and, and Derek, I met you, geez, what, 2000, early 2000s, we met at a mold school in what, Sacramento? I yeah. was impressed with you then. Little did we know that we'd have this day today, but. So I went to, you went to Kurt Bolden School. Hadn't you been out to his place? A couple late? of times. And, yep. and, you know, and Kurt was awesome and, and we all love and miss Kurt. But one of the things that I was mesmerized at Kurt, because I had lost the trailer by this point. Um, I walked in and saw his war board. And I don't know if you, he ever took you upstairs. To, yeah, remember the war board that like had all those colorful magnets and I'm like, I need to make that war board. So we went back and we bought this war board with all these magnets that are colors and you know, the red ones meant a dehumidifier and the air movers and the AFDs and whatever, whatever. We did it. And you know, if somebody accidentally didn't move a, 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 you know, a magnet over, we were like, wait, where did this one come from? And it would get us confused and we'd be going through paperwork. And then this homeowner has all of our equipment sitting there in her house. And I thought, okay, I've got to change from the war board. It was good. but. Obviously, it didn't work for us. So we decided to start building kind of uh, the iPhone 1 version of Inforge Drill. Real basic. Um, real basic. But it worked. Um, and so then right after we built it, this is kind of what prompted me to know it was time to increase it. So we have a homeowner call us. And they say, um, you guys come to pick up the equipment. Yeah, we're on our way right now. They were in a hurry to leave. Our guys go and pick up the equipment. And... We're looking at our you know primitive basic app and it shows there's still one piece of equipment at the house because it geolocates it's kind of a little gps function and uh and so our office calls back and says hey guys you know there's still equipment at the house and they're like oh no no we picked up everything 
And they're like, no, no, there's still equipment at the house. No, we picked up everything. So we call the homeowner. Hey, we've got to come back and get one more straggler piece of equipment. Like, oh, no, your guys got everything. So we're just about to believe them. But we decided to trust the app. So we said, no, you know, we've got this app that we're able to scan pieces of equipment, kind of geolocates it. It says there's still one piece of equipment at your house. And then, and I'm not suggesting they were, you know, up to no, no good on this, but I've felt in the past that homeowners wouldn't mind having an extra fan laying in their house. So the gentleman says, oh, that's right. It was really noisy that night. And I wrapped one up and put it behind the door in my bathroom or something like that. He's like, you're right. You do have one more piece of equipment here. And I thought, okay, how many times has that happened in the last year before yeah. we had the app? That was kind of the catalyst of saying, you've got to do something. And so we decided to kind of really put some money behind it. And then I started telling friends about it. In fact, you were the one of the trusted friends that I had mentioned two years ago that we were kind of building this out. And you said, you know, fantastic. So I started getting kind of the rah-rahs from good trusted friends that were in the industry. And I felt like, all right, this is a good expenditure of funds. I feel like it would not only serve our business well, um, but it would serve other businesses. And that that was kind of the kind of the founding of Inventory Shields, why we did it and you know where we're at today. And then obviously, as you sell it to different companies and they love it, now they've got three or four things they need that actually ends up helping others. And that's kind of where we're at today is building it out further, further, further. So anyways, I hope I didn't take too much time up. But no. That's kind of inventory. That was awesome. I was going to, because I'm coming for, at it from maybe a different perspective, Derek's obviously known you for a while and knows all about Inventory Shield and the functionality of it because he's used it. I haven't had the opportunity to, to, to really use it all that much. I was going to start asking some really dumb questions like, does it <laughs> geolocate and stuff like yeah. that? And it, and it does, which is like so cool because it'd be, it'd be one thing if you could scan a thing and you know, okay, it's it's not in the shop. But I don't know, and I know it's supposed to be on this job, but if it if it yeah. got scanned or coded incorrectly, I don't know if it's, you know what I mean? Like, that would be yeah. one thing, but the fact that it actually geolocates, you'd be like, well, it was supposed to be at that job, but it's actually over here at this job. Like, it helps to know, oh, actually, we scanned it incorrectly, or it got loaded onto the wrong van or truck or whatever. Like, that's super, super helpful. Exactly. Yeah, and that's, and that's precisely actually why we built that feature in, because... The first thing that happened to us is we, we loved that we could scan it to a location, but then we went to a big strip mall and we're drying it out. We've got air movers from one side to the other. It's all the same address though. Right. So when you put the address in the system or you, you know, if you're integrated with another app that does integrate with our app, it'll automatically populate that address. But yeah, you put the address in. Now it says all of your equipment is sitting at this address, but it, it is, but it's kind of like an eighth of a mile down the road at the end of the strip mall. <laughs> And so your guys go to monitor that and they're like, I have no idea where it's at. I have so to now, search through this entire strip mall to find that fan or, you know, that air mover. Correct. Yeah. So we built in two features, one, the geolocating. And, and oddly enough, we've got septic companies that use it. I didn't know this, but literally still today in 2023, guys, they'll type notes that say the septic system is 30 paces from the house and 20 paces from the tree. What if the tree disappears? It's like hard to find the septic. Well, now they can go up, they just scan the QR code, they bury it, it's all waterproof, it sticks and it's they love it. And all of a sudden it geolocates where they were standing when they took that picture. So now they've got a picture saved in the system, they've got a QR code that geolocates it from their phone right where the septic system sits. They love it. And I didn't. we had no idea that we were building it out for that reason, but it is cool to see <laughs> other companies find value in unique ways that we never knew. In fact, that same company, Oddly enough, they're an Arizona company up in the White Mountains, and they, they're they working at a mine. And so they put these portable toilets on a hill. They're like, there is no address. So they showed I, me – I actually flew out to meet them. They showed me this little map of Google with all these little flags. Like, this is how we're tracking our portable toilets for this mine right now. And you're saying your app, we can just scan it, and it will show us right where – I'm like, oh, heavens. Absolutely. And so now they can take pictures. They can put notes in. It's kind of been a game changer and it's fun to see it happen. And again, I feel like we provide a ton of value for the, the amount that we're taking in payment. So that to me is kind of fits kind of the core value of who we are as a company. But anyways, I don't know. I probably got off track there, but that, no. that that's kind of why we built that feature and was that exact reason we realized not all homes are small, not all job sites are small. Um, so the geolocating, and in fact, it'll do it offline. Uh, well, yeah, so you and, can and, take it offline. And when you come back online, it'll upload it for you, all the information you just took. Well, and so. again, like humans are imperfect, right? Like, so like yeah. I work for, I work for Derek's restoration company and I, 
I'm supposed to be going to a job at house A, but I accidentally scan this or, you know, I scan the QR code and I say, oh, this air mover is actually going to be at house B. But, you know, if, if, if it was just that scanning feature and that's all it was, then Derek is going to be like, well, Hayden, you said this air mover was supposed to be at this house. Why is it at this house? But now with the geolocating, you can be like, oh, I, I can actually look and see where exactly that is. We can, we can have, we can go pick it up later or whatever. Like I, I just like that feature is so, so yeah. crucial. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I would go on all day. I just remember we <laughs> met with a, a fire department and they were having struggle troubles knowing, you know, not only that their piece of equipment was scanned into the shop to get fixed, but they would leave these little cardboard notes on it saying it was broken. And that was it. It would just say broken. So the guy that comes to fix the chainsaws for the fire department had no idea what was broken. So now when they scan it into a broken section of their shop at geolocate, yep, it's there. Oh, and they put notes and they take pictures of what's actually wrong with the piece of equipment. So it's, it's again, it's fun to see it all kind of take shape of those exact struggles that we've all experienced is helping multiple industries. So anyways, I probably... <laughs> I'll talk your off. Sorry about this. No, baby. no, no, no. This, this right, is honestly on. super helpful. I, I, I was going to ask again, another dumb question. So feel free to be like, that's the dumbest suggestion ever. Uh, I have several family members that, so I have a, a brother-in-law that he's a sexton that he, you know, manages and works on several different cemeteries. So he cuts the grass and, and helps um, with funerals. And, you know, like he has lots of large pieces of equipment. He has like tractors and excavators and also has like lots of small pieces of equipment, like, like brooms and shovels and stuff like that. Like something like that for him would be so, so helpful because he manages three different cemeteries that are separated by 30, 40 miles. And so it would be great for him to know, oh, hey, that broom or that shovel is at this shop or that, oh, the tractor today, my employee didn't tell me, but the, my, my employee took the tractor today to this, you know, where it, like, Absolutely. like that pieces like that are so, so helpful. And I'm wondering, again, here's my dumb question. Are there any applications on like a personal level? Cause that what's yeah. funny is my brother-in-law and, and I occasionally will like share tools and I, I will have a wrench at his house or he will most more times often than not, cause he's got more tools than me. He will have something at my house and he will forget that he left it there. Or I will forget that it's in my garage. And three months later, he'll be like, Hey, I think my ladder got stolen. And I was like, uh, Absolutely. no, it's uh, sitting I in my house that. still. <laughs> so is there any kind of application you feel like for like like a personal base or is it maybe, maybe is, is it a little cost prohibitive for maybe is it make more sense for a business than it does for like someone on an individual level? Does that make sense? It honestly, and, and originally we did set this up for the business side. Yeah. But it's interesting. You bring that out. We've had a company in Missouri that's we're working with for exactly that, for the personal side. I mean, I, I have my own um, inventory shelved for my own family, my own home. For example, we just did our driveway. I didn't realize guys, when you pull up to someone's house, it's possible their driveway is worth more than their house. Like I never knew how much blacktop is. So truly I put a, I put a spot in our app for our home and called it driveway and scanned in all the receipts. And you, and the same goes for, you know, appliances, uh, maintenance on cars. In fact, our mechanic for my restoration company, every one of our cars in the windshield has a, you know, our logo. That, that's kind of cool. Their, their custom logo for every company's logo, but then it has the QR code. They can scan it. He types in all the notes of the maintenance. So same goes for homeowners, loaning out tools, um, scanning in all of your, uh, you know, if you have appliances, just scan in all the warranty work and throw it away. You're good to go. Everything's backed up. Everything's stored digitally. Um, people we've heard that have had files for all their bills. Yeah, and everything, and when you when you when you, when you scan in a new picture or a note, it kind of you know, puts the date in there and says how many documents you uploaded to that. Anyways, and that's getting better. There's some cool features to it, but we've got some great features coming for all of that. But right now, we're still building out features, so it's not quite as pretty as it's going to be. Although it's pretty nice looking, um, we've got it's going to get more streamlined. But yes, absolutely, homeowners use it for that precise reason. So now, when we go to church functions. Some of the stuff we would bring, um, actually most everything come to think of it. Like I've loaned out brooms and rakes and stuff to service right. projects and everything has our, our name. That's kind of nice, cool looking name with a QR code. So I know which project and who has it. So anyways, yes, there's definitely a home function. There's a lot of features um, to it. Yeah. So the answer I was, is yes. That's awesome. I was just thinking, that was a good one. I was just thinking like, again, like 
all of the cool things that you guys bring this this whole app brings to my mind but like i've got this whole library eric you've seen it my whole library of yeah, books. books i like, love that library. this whole wall of, of books right and <laughs> i have this big problem as i when i'm talking to somebody i'm like oh you got to read this book this is like this is the answer to your your challenges or this that's like you got to read this book and then like i just give it to him like you know hey read this book and then i forget who i gave it to yep. <laughs> i truly like you know how many of those Dave Ramsey books, the, um, oh, I know. how many I've given those away awesome. <laughs> and I've like replaced because I can't remember who I gave them to. Now, now I'm just like, I need to put my inventory shield. Um, that's interesting. I need to put a QR code in every one of those and then I'll know who I lend it. Yep. To. Well, yep. The, cool, the cool thing, Derek is on that in your own app, you can actually, you don't even have to put a QR code on it. Although it does help identify it to the person you loaned it to. Mm -hmm. But you can simply just type in the name of the book and that becomes the equipment ID. Oh, yeah. Like I did driveway. I don't have a QR code anywhere on my driveway. You just literally call your driveway, your driveway, make that your equipment ID, and then it starts storing it. So when so you nice. want something with your driveway, you just search your database for driveway. It brings up all your documents, pictures. I got the business cards of the guy that did it. Uh, I've got all the warranty they promised me, all the pricing, so I can go back if they ever quote me to do any more. Yeah, so it is kind of cool for that reason. And actually... It is nice because, for example, when I first, so when I sold Service Master 2009, I came out to Ohio. I bought Service Master because I, it was a place in the country that it wasn't already built. It was just a license. And, and in those days, you could buy a Service Master license for like 30000 I bought three of them, kind of the whole eastern side of Ohio. And when I sold it in 2009, I thought to myself, I'm done with restoration. I'm going to go back to Arizona where I was home and become a fireman. <laughs> <laughs> what a blessing that I couldn't get myself to feel like that was the right thing to do. I couldn't, I couldn't feel like that was right. So I thought, all right, well, then I need to start another restoration company. That's all I know. So I, um, make a long story short, when I started the next restoration company, I thought, okay, I'm going to buy all new equipment and I'm going to make sure I don't lose it. So I put all these cameras up in my shop so I could see every angle of my equipment. And then if we got a large loss, I could be like, oh, let me check my camera. It looks like we have about 200 air movers right there. It looks like we have about 50. And now with your app or your library or your tools, you'll see exactly a whole list of exactly what you have in your shelves, what you have on truck one, truck two, truck. You know, we've got 30 or 40 restoration trucks between the multiple areas every day on the road. It's impossible to keep track. We used to do this. We used to call our guys and say, hey, you know, Fred, how many DHUs do you have on your truck? And truly, this is what they did. They're like, oh, hold on. And they'd be like, uh two hold on one sec four they're like looking backwards <laughs> check counting while they're driving down the road while they're driving and again we don't even have to call them anymore we already know how many extension cords we already know how many ladders we already know how much equipment they have on their truck so we know if a, a certain type of job comes in like the kurt bolden day we only have a few hydro x machines we have rovers which are good but we all agree that the hydro x kurt per proved it to us many times it's the best but we don't have too many of them so we call that certain truck if there's a large loss that has lots of equipment we want to try to salvage it's going to pull the most water out and so we call that specific truck that has it anyways so your library your tools at home you can check your app and you'll know where everything's at all the time so it's awesome i love it pretty pretty good well i've got two kind of obviously i've got some questions i want to ask you as just a guest of the podcast sure. at the end but the final two all things right. i want to i want to talk about with inventory shield First, um, where can people find out more about Inventory Shield? Where, where do they need to go? Check out your website, I would assume, but where, where, where can they go to learn a little bit more about Inventory Shield? Yeah, honestly, inventoryshield.com. We just updated our website to be a little more better at explaining what it is. It's, it's semi-new technology. I mean, a lot of people are still doing sheets and we, you know, that's great. Um, but we get a lot of people that sign up that are literally coming from pencil and paper and having their guys write off sheets to... So inventoryshield.com is the easiest. We do have a Facebook site that we post new features, new videos about it. Um, just inventory shield at Facebook. That's probably the simplest. Um, but yeah, if you reach out to us, it's it, all of our pricings right there. Um, the different, yeah, the different fees. So it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple. And the other cool thing is that there's some portion that's like, uh, you know, instant communication through our email site. But then we do actually contact you personally to get a copy of their logo so we can update their logo. We'll send them a few proofs. So they're they're getting custom tracking labels. It's like being able to logo all of your equipment 
for free yeah. and get the cool app with it. So it is kind of kind of nice that you can have on your ladders, your logo, you know, on all of your air movers, everything looks looks good. So anyways, awesome. inventoryshield.com. Thank you. <laughs> inventoryshield.com. Um, the other the kind of the second part of that is what's the biggest or what's the the newest feature that's coming out for you guys that you're the most excited about? What 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 kind of feature are you Ooh, really looking forward yeah. to launching? So I, I, won't, I don't want to take too much time up, but over the years, like we have companies that track CPAP machines. We have companies that rent surfboard, surfboards in South Carolina. We have companies that gambling machines and they track the innards of the computer. So we have all these different companies. And one of the questions that we got most, we have, you know, roofing companies was supplies and parts. Um, plumbing companies, a huge plumbing company, again, in Arizona, um, called us and they didn't know that I was from Arizona. They, their biggest issue was parts. So we, it's taken us a year to build out parts and supplies. So now, not only can you track your equipment, but you can track how many garbage bags you have on a truck. You can track how many linear feet of plastic you have on a truck. You can track, you know, for plumbers, how many parts or pieces of whatever they put in houses they have on their trucks, roofers. Um, so our supplies feature it was quite a build out and it's, and we're still perfecting it. Um, but we really do listen to our clients. We really do. Um, because we're a client ourselves of our own app, we have our own ideas, but we love the input. So the most recent, I mean, we've got a lot of releases we just did, but the biggest one is the parts and supplies. So now they can track their equipment, their tools, all their supplies on the truck. So now that the flow goes for us, the flow goes, how many boxes of bags do I have in my shop? And then we have a min and max set. So then when it gets down to the minute, it tells us reorder 150 boxes of bags. Then I go to the trucks. I can see how many boxes of bags at each truck. And then how many did you use at a house? So it'll allow you to consume it at someone's home. So, so now you can look at your app and say, at this home, we consumed 150 bags. And there's still 150 on the truck. And there's still 350 boxes in our shop. So now we're able to keep better track of you know, guys come and go and it's funny, guys are like, we're out of bags. I'm like, well, we got to order more. Well, how many should I order? I'm like, I don't know. Ask them how many we ordered last time. We don't do that anymore. Um, it's actually, we didn't ask for this feature. Actually, a large roofing company and a plumbing company kind of combined got us to push over there. And we love it. Like at my own restoration company, it's great. So we're really excited about that. I, that was way long-winded. No, no, <laughs> no. That's, that's, the, that's, the that's, that's a that's and parts a feature. That's an awesome feature. The parts and supplies yeah. thing is going to be huge for, yeah. and again, companies outside yeah. of the restoration space, right? Like that's hugely apl applicable to plumbers yeah. and HVAC and, and people that are burning through supplies like this. That's going to be really, really crucial for them. So I love it. The, right. It feels like the HVAC question. world is the ones that are like hitting us the most on that right now. So you're right, HVAC. Keep going, Derek. I'm interested. What's your question? No, you're fine. I mean, Hayden, you said you had a couple of questions. I got one more because Go ahead. I know the answer to this. But I, I think people are going to, one of the first questions they're going to have is you've alluded to the fact that you're using tracking labels that you're putting on all the equipment, right? And mm -hmm. the first thing that's going to go through, I know that the first thing that came through my mind was, well, great, you're going to provide me with all these labels. I'm gonna, this equipment is going in and out of buildings. It's going in and out of trucks. It's, you know, we're, we're, we work with water all of the time. Yeah. Like these, these labels are going to get ruined. Da, 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 da. It's like, and so I'm going to be constantly, what happens when these labels fall off of a piece of equipment or, you know, they get lost, you know, the value of this app is going to be significantly reduced if these labels don't work. Um, yeah. And I know the answer to this question, but what, what kind of uh, research, like, like how good are these labels that you're yeah. providing? So interestingly enough, on this one, my, my father, I was raised, my dad owned a sign company, crazy enough. And actually his, his contracts were with the PGA. So every U.S. Open until this last one, he just retired. Every U.S. Open since the 90s, every one. Most of the summers I was at a U.S. Open, a U.S. Senior Open. And we were making signs for these companies, for the, for the PGA. Really? And the, yeah. Yeah, so I grew up, I was at Tiger Woods' first U.S. Open. And the reason I bring that up is oh the kind of the background gosh. of the family is, is, is sign making. Yeah, I was there. I That's saw so Phil cool. Mickelson back in the day, you, you know, drive like in two hits. I mean, I've, I used to follow Payne Stewart with my golf cart. Okay, that's kind of the background. So we decided to do these labels. I instantly call my dad and say, steer me straight. Show me some good, you know, vinyl and stuff that we could, because we wanted to do some prototypes. 
and we thought we had it solved. And it was, they were really good. We thought they were good enough for us. But then we got a company in Utah that does dumpsters and they sit outside. And exactly that problem started happening. Then we got some companies that just bought brand new equipment. It was like sprayed with some like armor on. We thought, okay, we've got to have better. We've got, it's just not quite good enough. Um, so yeah, we found what we use now is the best. It's fixed. We actually warn people like, you don't, you may not want to pull this off. Like it, it might pull paint off of like, like it's, it's going to stay there. It's kind of like that stuff that you put on your license plate. Like it's not designed to come off. It's fixed. It's waterproof for seven years outside. We put a real thick laminate over it. You won't see it. You won't tell the difference, but we care. So it could sit outside. In fact, one of the companies that we have does a septic, another septic company. They wanted to put a logo on their truck with our QR code so they could scan that truck. It's just the way they wanted to use the app. And it, these labels are sitting in the Arizona sun, no fading, um, totally waterproof. They don't, they're, they're great. And, and we haven't had a complaint in years, but we did. We thought we solved it. We didn't. We thought we solved it again. We didn't. But now we've, we're to the point where we really don't get complaints anymore. The other cool thing is another feature we built into it is if you've got a tall ladder or a big piece of equipment or the guys stack the equipment in your truck a certain way, you can put multiple layers on one piece of equipment that all mean the same piece of equipment. Labels don't fall off anymore. However, if one gets you know damaged or if somebody actually sprays paint right over it, um, there's usually more than one. We actually send so many that people can put multiple logos or multiple QR codes on one piece of equipment. So no matter which way you strike in your truck or on your shelves or in a house, your guys aren't having to bend over to get one QR code. They can scan it from multiple angles. So awesome. Anyway. Awesome. Thanks, Darryl. Cool. That was a good one. And those labels, the, well, the labels are amazing. They really are. Yeah. I, I love yeah. It, it, it's been a long process, but we're really excited with the product we give out. And we've been giving it out for years. So it, they hold up. Awesome. Love that was it. my question, Hayden. No, uh, that's a great that's a great way to close it out again. I could talk to Eric about this all day, every day. I mean I and, could too. The the stories that you're sharing, Eric, about like equipment being left at people's house for two years and like and then in my yeah. brain, like all of the applications that I have just in like my immediate family, like you've got the brother obviously that I was talking about that does that. I have another brother that works for an he's he's an agronomist. So he works with farmers and they're constantly tracking mm. fertilizer tanks, trucks, tractors, oh. sprayers, like, like this would be yeah. stuff like this. There are so many applications out there in any kind of like a tool or equipment based company that like has to have these tools and has to be able to know where they're at. Like so many applications. And so my mind has just been going constantly. Oh. Like, I got, I got to, <laughs> I got to talk to people about this. <laughs> no, I appreciate but, it. You jogged my mind. We've got a small farmer here in Ohio. That on the other side, you know how those tags in the ears of the cows? Yes. The one side's kind of etched with a number. The other side, they put a QR code, all their internal information of the shots, the vaccines. They That's, just scan it and they know everything. You're tracking cows. That's yeah. amazing. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it's, it's cool to see the way. I mean, we love It's actually one of our most favorite things is different companies that call in and and tell us how they're using the app. And frankly, that's how the app grows is people find different ways to use. We have a company that uses it for all their HR. Truly, I went to their company. I saw them onboard a new hire. And they said, first thing, get your phone out, download Inventory Shield. I was inter interested to see how this, and they're a huge company. The guy was a plumber that got bought out for $40 million. They're a big company. And he's in it. It's kind of one of those PE groups that buys you out. He got bought out. He's still running it. And they use Inventory Shield for all their HR. They found a cool way to use it. And so now we're adapting the app to actually be able to do that by design, what they do with it. So, so cool. Anyways, there's some cool features coming. We're still building. We've got all, all of them. In fact, one of our head developers was a head developer for Uber's app, um, Silicon Valley developer. He came over with us just, uh, it's been about a year, year and a half. He used to be part-time, now he's full-time. So we've got some really great developers that are all here in America. And I don't, I'm not knocking anybody else that doesn't, by the way. But that is kind of our claim to fame that like we're employing people here. You can call and talk to our developers. We'll get reach out to you if there's a big problem. Or if you have a need, we want to build it out. So anyway. Awesome. Love it, Eric. All right. I got I got one more question time. for you. Yeah, right. go, Derek. What's up, brother? Before today, did you know what a sexton was? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, did not, I did not know what a sexton was before today. I learned something new today. That's what if the, you had stopped the, the guy the, the, the guy in like the, the horror movies. I wouldn't have known. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy in the horror movies that was that would carry around a shovel and like in the middle of the cemetery in the middle of the night and like swinging a lantern like that's a sexton so that's kind yeah, of what my brother-in-law does that's your brother 
Awesome. He's uh he's he's a good guy. And that's not his full-time <laughs> job. What's funny is he's actually a flight paramedic, but this is what he does oh, really? on the side. So he like is always working. He never has a free second. And um thankfully now he's got some more employees, so he doesn't have to do it all himself. But so if um, he can't save him on the flight, he can bury him. He's gonna bury hands. him. He's gonna bury him. He's He's full he's circle, Derek. Multiple, he's full circle. Multiple, full service. Geez. Specialty yeah, right there. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Eric, this Good has been an awesome, again. awesome podcast. It, seriously, you. what you've what you've talked about and what you've shared with everybody has been super, super helpful. Um, as a, a regular podcast guest, we do want to kind of wrap up with the three big questions we ask at the end of every episode. Um, we typically call them kind of rapid fire questions, but don't feel like your right. answers have to be quick by any means. Um, first question, favorite book or podcast that you're reading or listening to, uh, right now, or that you've read or listened to recently. I think the most influential was the go-giver. I actually nice. just reread it with my son. We went to Wyoming hiking and I said, son, we're going to listen to it. We did it on audible. So we just went through it again. I love it. Um, that's probably my favorite, most influential book right now. Believe it or not, through my church, I'm taking a self-reliance course called "Starting and Growing My Business," and I'm Love excited it. to learn something. Yeah, you can never stop learning. So that's that's what I would say. But I do enjoy your guys' podcast, and uh, on our Inventory Shield Facebook site, we've we've shared a number of them that are very, very informational. So, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Where'd you go? Side note: Where'd you go hiking in Wyoming? Did you go to the Wyoming? Wind Rivers? Yeah, we did. Very Boy, that cool. That was epic. Wind yeah. Rivers was that that was a hike. That's a that's a dream spot for me <laughs> and and my friends. Yeah. I've got well, family members. I've got family members that we're we're trying to plan next couple of years, we're gonna probably gonna plan to go out to the Wind Rivers at some point. So yeah. yeah. Beautiful. It was area. Amazing. It, it was incredible. So yeah, so we listened to the Go Giver cool. there and wonderful talked book. about a little bit back. So thank Love you. That book. Um second question. You wear a lot of hats. Right. You've obviously wore a lot of hats throughout your career as owners oh. of multiple different businesses. Um, you've got a couple of different apps right now. We talked about uh, Inventory Shield. You've got yeah. the other one we'll probably talk about in a future episode. But um, how do you relax at the end of a long day? How do you recharge your batteries and and uh, you know help get ready for the next day or the next or the next job you've got to work on? So I think for me, really, I did. I appreciate you bring this one up. I thought about it ahead of time. I put you kind of gave a little might ask this one, and I really thought I love I love biking. I grew up mountain biking in Arizona. I like road biking, but I think for me now, I like working in my yard. I like cleaning it up outside, and making it look nice. Um, so if it's not snowy or cold outside, then then honestly, I just come inside. I'm kind of a news junkie. I don't know. Maybe the economy right now is stressing me, so I I catch up on the economy. Uh oh, I lost you. Oh, nope. okay. No. There we go. I there thought my go. phone was blipping out on me. Yeah. You're good. Did I lose you? No, you're nope. good. Okay. Anyway, so I, I yeah, I watch news. <laughs> That's it. Hey. Um, but I, you know, everything's with my family. So we're kind of homebodies as a family. And sometimes go on hiking trips to my Wyoming, you know, there yeah. you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Love it. Love it. Yeah. That was, that was his senior trip. So we were excited. It, it's easy when your son says for my senior trip, I'd like to go camping and hiking. I'm like, wow, that's easy. Let's do this. Let's do that. That was good. Heck yeah. Last question. Um, you've obviously done a lot of really cool things throughout your career, Eric. We talked a little bit about your background and, and what you're doing now with Inventory Shield. But if you could rewind to the beginning of it all, if you could talk to younger Eric, what would be the one thing you would tell yourself? Wow. So that's a really good, I, I've always firmly believed that great people build great businesses. And I think I tried to wear too many hats. So I, I'll, I, I'm super long winded. I'll stop here. In 2016, had a struggle. We were not in my marriage. It was the, it, the struggle was the blessing again. I took some time off, stepped back for six months and instantly went from being owner manager to hiring a general manager. Finally, my business took off more. I was wearing too many hats and I didn't realize it. So my marriage was struggling. Our business was struggling. I didn't know it, either of it. Um, what a blessing it was to spend some quality time to, you know, save the family, save the marriage, happier today than we've ever been. Uh, the blessing was, again, the, the struggle was the blessing and hired a general manager. So what I would say is be patient and build people first mm. because great people build great businesses. So if you want your business to be great, I really believe, look around, trust people, build them, and then your business will start to follow that building. Um, so that that's that's what I would do. Again, I would take off the hats as quick as possible, put trust in people, 
build them up, help them know what we see in them, how great they are, and let them be great. And your business will flourish. And so since 2016 is really, I call it like when I actually started making money. So from 1998 to 2016, I did what everybody else did. Kind of like build a business, had some money, but nothing great. Good. I mean, to, to most of it, we were comfortable, but not great. Um, we didn't become start becoming great until my struggle uh, was the blessing. So I would say be patient and build people. That's what I'd say. It's awesome. awesome. That's a great way to close out this episode. Eric, <laughs> thank you again for coming on. This has been awesome. Derek, thanks for introducing us. This is going to be, I think, a, a really, really cool episode for our for our listeners. And we have to have you back on in the future because you've got something else we got to talk about, Referral Reactor, which is, another, yeah. which is another cool piece to this, especially to the restoration industry that it, I, I think Absolutely. if people don't already know about it, they have to know about it. So oh, yeah. uh, thanks again, Eric, for coming on. It's going to be great to have you on again in appreciate the future. You. And uh, yeah, we just really, really appreciate it. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you guys, both of you. Hayden, it was a pleasure meeting you as well. Derek, good to see you again, brother. You take Eric, care down there in warm Texas. Always, always <laughs> love talking to you, brother. Glad you were here. Oh, man. Appreciate you. This has been Success Elevated, making you a little bit better one show at a time. Thanks for joining us. Please subscribe on YouTube or any other major podcast platform to listen to more episodes. We are proudly brought to you by Spot On Solutions. If you'd like to learn more about how we can help you grow your business, please check us out at spotonsolutions.com.